Hello there guys and welcome back to the channel. In this video we are going to be taking a look at the performance of the RTX 4090 alongside the i9-13900K processor in Microsoft Flight Simulator. We just departed London City Airport, but before we delve into the details of this video, let's go ahead and take a look at the in-sim settings. The sim is currently running in full screen resolution at 4K. We have anti-aliasing set at TAA, with the render scaling at 100%. VSync is currently turned off and we are on DX12, which is a requirement for DLSS 3. The terrain level of detail is set to 325. All the other settings are set to Ultra with the exception of the texture super sampling which is set to 6x6. For those of you interested in my NVIDIA control panel, I have used the default settings for the most part. The only thing that I have changed is background application max frame rate set to 30 FPS. This might prove useful for any graphics card, including the 4090. As far as the NVIDIA control panel for Microsoft Flight Simulator, Again, I have used all default settings with the exception of power management mode set to prefer maximum performance. Everything else is set to the global settings. As you can see, we are now getting about 100 FPS or so, and we are overclocking the CPU to 5.5 GHz. The temperatures of both the GPU and the CPU are within normal limits. They are kind of fluctuating, but nothing too serious. And you can see the GPU utilization of the 4090 is about 95% and above. Of course, the, I'm using the Zotac 4090, which is already overclocked, so I have not done any changes to the overclocking settings of the GPU. The real test would be to load one of the heavy airliners at London Heathrow Airport, an aircraft like the PMDG 737 or the Phoenix A320. So let's go ahead and do just that. I have now loaded the PMDG 737 at London Heathrow Airport. The scenery is that of any scene. As you can see, we are now getting about 80 FPS with our temps all in normal range. We are going to go ahead and take off, but first, let's go ahead and change this to DLSS 3 in order to see if we get any gains in performance. We're going to change the anti-aliasing to the NVIDIA DLSS Super Resolution with the quality preset. We are now in DLSS 3 mode. Let's go in and apply and save. As you can see, we are not getting any gains in performance. We are still getting 80 FPS with exactly the same utilization of the GPU and the CPU with normal temps on both. All right, let's go ahead and take off. Parking brake is released, and let's go. Again, we'll take a note of the smoothness as we roll down the runway at a very involved scenery. You can see a little bit of fluctuation in the FPS, but nothing too serious. And we're going to rotate. Positive rate of climb and gears going up. We're still maintaining healthy FPS as we depart London Heathrow. Switching to the external camera, as you can see here, we're getting uh, FPS close to the 100 range in the PMDG 737 without any stuttering. A very smooth and crisp experience and of course as we move away from the airport vicinity the, we expect the FPS to go up which is the case this level of performance without a doubt is unprecedented let us now try a different stress test this time we're gonna load the Phoenix a320 at Los Angeles International Airport we are now at runway 25 right at Los Angeles International Airport. 
scenery by any scene. As you can see, we are getting 90 FPS with our processor and GPU temps in normal range. The utilization of the GPU is approximately 70% and about 46% for the utilization of our CPU. Again, this level of performance is unprecedented and I used to get barely 37 FPS with the previous build. And as you can see, as I pan around the camera in the cockpit, everything's very fluid, very sharp, and the FPS is simply great. All right, let's go ahead and release the parking brake and depart. Again, we're rolling down the runway. There are no stuttering. Everything is very smooth. Performance is very good. Again, we get a, a slight drop in FPS there. 140 knots. Let's go ahead and rotate. Positive rate. Gears going up. We are now flying over the Los Angeles area with about 90 FPS in external view and about 80 FPS in the internal view. So we are flying now at a very high preset. What I'm going to do is I'm going to reset the InSim settings to the Ultra preset and take a look at the performance. We're going to change the anti-aliasing to TAA and we're going to come to the global rendering quality and change this to ultra. We're going to apply the settings. You will immediately notice the improvement in visual quality. So TAA is the best anti-aliasing mode for Microsoft Flight Simulator from the visual perspective. By moving to the ultra preset, we have definitely gained a lot of performance. And as you can see now, we're flying the Phoenix over the Los Angeles area with approximately 100 FPS in the external view and about 90 FPS in the internal view. Again, as we move around the cockpit, everything is very smooth and very fluid. For our third test, I have loaded the Just Flight BAE 146 at Boston Logan International Airport. As you can see, we are getting solid 100 FPS with our processor and GPU temps in normal limits, with good utilization of our GPU, approximately 90%. All right, let's go ahead and take off. Again, we're going to take notice of the FPS slide drop in the FPS here uh, at uh, Boston. Again, very smooth experience as we roll down the runway. Very fluid as we move around the cockpit. Speed alive, both sides. Take off. Gear. Right, positive rate. Gear is going up. As you can see, the FPS remains at about 100 with a very smooth experience as we fly out of Boston. And in the external view as well, we can notice that there are no stuttering. Everything remains sharp and fluid with very healthy FPS. In order to enable DLSS 3 and frame generation in Microsoft Flight Simulator, you need a couple of things. One, you need the hardware accelerated GPU scheduling to be turned on. Also, you need to make sure that you are on DX12. You also need to change the NVIDIA DLSS Super Resolution for the anti-aliasing 
and turn on the NVIDIA DLSS frame generation. You are now in DLSS 3, harnessing the full power of this new technology in Microsoft Flight Simulator. NVIDIA has without a doubt lived up to its promise by bringing unprecedented levels of performance in its brand new RTX 4090 graphics card. Microsoft and Asobo has also lived up to their promise by harnessing the power and leveraging the DLSS technology available in the 4090 graphics card to achieve unprecedented levels of performance in any flight sim to date. Well folks, this pretty much brings us to the conclusion of our short video. I will be making more videos in the future to provide you with my thoughts, tips, tricks, recommendations, and my honest opinion on whether the RTX 4090 and this new setup was worth the investment or not. Stay tuned for more, but until next time, please take care of yourselves and each other, and I will see you all very soon. Thanks for tuning in, and bye-bye for now.